Hey everyone, welcome to another Mix Tank Takeover. It's Monday, so I'm taking over Mix Tank every other Monday. But I'm here this Monday. Good to see you guys. Thank you guys for, uh, for showing up and for submitting your mixes. I'm excited to get to them. If it's your first time joining us, this is where we go to Mix Tank over on puremix.net, which you can think of like a think tank for mixing. So you upload your mix and the entire Pure Mix community can drop comments on it. And then every other Monday I'm here and I uh, comment live on the air. So that's what we're doing today. And before we get started, I have an exciting announcement to get to, but I also want to say thank you so much to everybody who came out to AES, said hi to me on the show floor, and uh, who came by the Pure Mixers party at Flux Studios uh, last Thursday. That was a blast. We had somewhere around like 50 or 60 people show up, and we were doing like Atmos listening sessions in the dungeon at Flux, um, which everybody learned. If somebody is next to the elevator and they ask if you want to go to the dungeon, you say yes. It's a hard rule. So that was a blast. We had Vance Powell there. Um, we had Brian Lucy was in the house, uh, Michael Romanowski, and uh, Fab, Jimmy Douglas. So many people came and uh, had a blast. So that was cool. We'll do more of those in the future at, at some more trade shows and stuff. So keep an eye out for all of that. And yeah, it was a great AES. And to kick off AES, last Monday, we released a new plugin. And that guy is called Spice Rack. So this is the, uh, the website for Spice Rack. And if you're a Pure Mix Pro member, you guys get it for free. So you can head over to process.audio, download it. You'll get your iLock code and all that stuff just for being a Pure Mix subscriber. But I'm going to talk about it for a second because it's freaking amazing. And it's got a lot of really cool features in it. So um, you guys can check it out at process.audio and watch the trailer. Uh, but I just want to go over the interface to get you excited about it. It's pretty cool. So... Uh, this is a creative distortion plugin. So what that means is we've got a lot more flexibility than other saturation plugins that you might be familiar with um, that really allow you to kind of get in and, and tailor the sound specifically. So I'm going to work my way left to right. And over on the left side, it starts off with a gate. So why do you want a gate on a saturation plugin? Well, let's say that uh, you've got some drums and you only, or like a bass guitar or something, and you want to give it the, the sensation that it's, you know, as you dig into the instrument or you have a louder hit or a louder transient, that clips the source or clips the signal. But what happens before it, not so much. So it's, it's giving a dynamic reaction to how hard you're, you're pushing into it. So the gate is over on the left and you can tailor that thing in pretty well. Um, there's a number of advanced features. If you open up the interface a little more, you can do some high passing, low passing, and really kind of get in there on what it is that you want to push into the into the drive circuit. Going to the right, most of the time, but not always, which we'll get to in a second, is the drive section. So if you look up at the top, we've got five different flavors of distortion. We've got drive, tube, amp, lo-fi, and fuzz. And then inside of the drive module, you have the option to push it an extra 18 dB to really like get things pretty crazy. You can process in stereo, mid, and side. And then uh, obviously big drive, drive knob, you need that. And then at the bottom, we have a calibrate section. So auto gain compensation. And what that'll do is when you hit calibrate, it'll listen to the signal and then automatically adjust the output of the drive module so that you're not being fooled by volume stuff. That's obviously very easy to do with, with saturation plugins. So it's nice to have that. Going to the right, we have an EQ module. And the EQ uh, is linear phase. So that means you won't have any weirdness if you're doing a, a wet, dry blend of the thing. It's all happening in perfect phase, even though you're changing the equalization uh, on, your, on your source. So you can really kind of fine tune the, what's being saturated to you know, high frequencies, mid frequencies, low frequencies, all of that. And then once you get a curve you like, you can play with the slider on the right, where it says bright and dark, the tone knob, and you can move that curve up and down the spectrum to find a sweet spot for it. So why I said the drive is at the front most of the time is because you can actually take that EQ and flip it before the drive section and then be even more particular about what it is that you're sending into saturation. After the EQ section, we've got a mix knob, so wet dry mix. You all know how that works. And um, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. There's some oversampling options. Uh, the linear phase feature is amazing on it. And it's uh, one of the most you know, creative distortion plugins that, that I've used for sure. Um, 
there, if we, let's see, I think that this module will expand if we try. Nope, not on the site. Um, ah, here we go. The console. Over on the right, we have a console feature. And this allows you to strap multiple spice racks across all of your channels, just your drums, whatever it is that you want to do. And then you have this console remote section where you can control uh, whatever is in a group of different spice rack instances. So if I've got this across my drums, I could assign all of my drums to channel one, and then I could manipulate the drive or mix or out or what the actual, um, what the tone circuit is. So if it's the drive tube, amp, lo-fi, or fuzz, I can change all of that from here. And then those individual plugins will all show up in a list uh, over on the right. So if you wanted to push a group of instruments more, you don't have to go into each individual plugin. You can gang all of the controls together, which is pretty sweet. So this gets really fun because you can simulate the effect of driving an analog console as hard as you want. So finding a sweet spot for it. So if you strap it across everything, you could use something like drive or tube and then just start pushing it until you feel like you're, you're starting to get some nice saturation going. Uh, so yeah, it'll breathe a ton of life into sources. It's amazing and it's free for all of the pro members. If, uh, if you're not a pro member and you want to check it out anyway, there's a free trial on the site and you can also get it independently of being a pro member. So plenty of uh, audio examples on there to check out. And yeah, everybody go get it. It's a blast. But today we're here to do Mixtank. So here's Mixtank. Uh, if you haven't seen this before, over on the left, I've got a list of mixes that have been submitted by the pro members. I've got a timeline in the center. And then where it says no feedback yet on my screen, that's where everybody's comments will show up. Over on the far right, we've got a little bit of information about the song. So the user can say what the status of this track is. For example, the one on my screen says advanced mix. And he's got a little bit of a, a note in there. So this, the song is called Chasing Shadows. It's a pop tune. And then he's saying, I'm re-uploading the latest version after doing my best to implement the last suggestions, which were really helpful. Uh, just looking for any last suggestions or feedback that I've mixed. It's always super helpful. Awesome. So this one's from Jay Allen. And I think that's a good place to start. After this, we're going to um, we're gonna do some draw a track. I've got a draw a track button up here uh, where it'll randomly select a mix from the queue. And uh, what I've been doing on the recent streams is taking anybody's mix that's in the live chat. So if you've taken the time to come here for the live stream today, I want to try and get to your mix. So please drop your username and the name of your song in the comments, and I will try to get to as many as possible. We're going to go till about 4.30 today, so uh, let's get to it and try to get to as many as we can. All right, so Chasing Shadows from Jay Allen. Here we go. going to comment as I go here. I want to check out this transition and then the stuff that's happening in between. So I'm also going to hit my HD button here. Here we go. All right. So just uh, one comment. This one's all style and, you know, uh, producer's choice here, but there's nothing um, kind of accenting the one right there of the bar, which is cool, but it struck me as weird on first listen just because the bottom kind of fell out of it. I was expecting to hear some crashes or a kick or something, um, but that is a total creative choice. On this uh, section in between here where everything goes out, I was hearing some kind of like finger noise and players moving around and stuff. So I would consider just kind of cleaning that up a little bit. Um, and making it nice and tight. Here we go. Painting pictures on your wall You close the door to be alone An empty room and an empty mind 
Nice one. Okay, awesome, man. Thanks for uh, submitting, Jay Allen. Uh, I'm going to listen to one or two more things here. I'm just going to spot check some stuff, and then I'll tell you guys what I'm listening for. Okay, so right there, I was listening for um, a little bit of a what I call a mask, right? So if you're unfamiliar with that term, um, masking in EQ or frequency is when one frequency almost sounds like it has a resonance and it becomes so loud that it makes everything else seem less than, right? So it takes over things. Um, in this case, I'm hearing like a uh, something in like the 2, 240 range, uh, 220, like usually in vocals that can kind of become a buildup on lower passages like this. 
uh, proximity effect, all that kind of stuff. But that frequency area kind of becomes more prominent and it masks the brighter frequencies of the vocal and it's just kind of making it harder to understand it and hear it. Um, I also heard a mouth click at the very end. Um, super sensitive to mouth clicks. I don't like um, hearing like the lip smacks and all that stuff from vocalists usually because it, uh, it interferes with my ability to suspend disbelief. Um, so when I'm listening to a song, I just, I want to be in it, right? I don't want to be thinking about like, there's a singer in front of a microphone and they just drank some water and they're smacking their lips in the microphone. Really easy to fix. Isotope mouth declick is great for it. Um, default settings, you can just run it and it doesn't destroy your vocal and it sounds amazing. Um, so let's just listen to that mask one more time here. This place, I'm lost and chasing shadows on my way. This place. You can really hear it on the word place. So one more time. Now, I was surprised by that because back in the verses, I felt like the vocal was a little nasally and missing some low mid information. So I'm just going to check that over here. The fire is burning all the time. Mind. The fire is burning all the time. Yeah, so I don't hear that problem as much back here. So now uh, we have a situation, I talk about this. Uh, sometimes there's two ways to deal with the problem and one of them is a permanent solution and the other one's a temporary solution. Uh, never fix a temporary problem with a permanent solution. In life, in mixing, it usually doesn't go well. So on this one, I might consider automating an EQ on that last passage in the vocal where that low mid mask kind of happens. Now, generally, throughout the song, I was feeling like the vocals had a little bit of a nasally quality. Um, they were feeling a little bit congested and like there was a lot of uh, like 800-ish kind of thing going on and not a lot else happening around the vocal. So there I was going to say you could play with an EQ and instead of doing cuts and hacking things up, maybe just try to bring up some other interesting points in the vocal. So a lot of times I will just take a band... Um, if it's like a pro cue or something like that, and I'll just kind of search around for a frequency that helps the vocal speak, if you will. Um, that's a term I'm stealing from John Paterno because it makes so much sense. But uh, when you find a point in the spectrum that things kind of come alive, that's going to be a great place to start to, to kind of boost and see if you can get some life out of that vocal. Um, that was kind of one of the bigger issues that I saw with the mix, and it's not big in the sense of like, the grand scheme of things, it's a huge deal. Um, this mix actually feels great. So I should have led with that. The mix feels really awesome. And uh, just a couple tweaks, and I think it's going to be great. So uh, I'll just go through the other list here. So the drums, um, they cut out without a downbeat uh, several times within the song. And I think it's a cool creative choice in that, you know, you're being intentional with it. But I do feel like the song loses momentum when those things happen. Just a note, it was my reaction to it, but that is 100% creative and um, completely subjective. So uh, the kick and the bass feel a little bit bloated to me. And that could be a volume thing where they could just be too loud and they're kind of taking up range around everything. The kick feels like the loudest element of the mix to me, which is easy to do if, um, if you can't hear bottom end very well in your room. Um, I would say like try listening at low level and see where the balance is. And I think if those two came back, the, entri the entire track's excitement will go up without sacrificing a whole lot of your overall balance stuff. Um, just a suggestion, you know, you could do a save as and try it, and if it doesn't work, leave it where it is. Um, if you love the balance and the volume of it, I would just check out around like between 80 and, you know, 110 or so, and just see if there's anything in those two instruments that's kind of getting a little too excited and taking up too much room. That range can take up a whole lot of room in your mix. Sometimes just cutting in those areas can bring some clarity to the whole thing. Um, the snare felt like it could use a little bit more upper mid crack. Like if you had a bottom snare in there, I would probably be trying to find some presence there, either from that or just EQing the top. And then overall, I felt like some things get a little bit washed out in reverb, uh, like the strings that happen toward that bridge section, I think. Um, I wanted to hear some more definition of the instrument and the notes, and I kind of felt like I was getting a paddy wash which um, again could be cool, but it felt like it was getting some build up too. So maybe just look for a little clarity in that. And uh, then my only other comment was uh, cymbal swell at 358 was really loud and mono compared to how wide everything else feels. So 
Uh, maybe just take a look at that, make sure it's not like coming out so far that it's a little painful, and then see if um, you could do something to spread it out a little bit. I just learned about an awesome plugin for this, um, which is called Upmix, I think. It's from Plugin Alliance, and I think Sheps is the manufacturer, but not Andrew Sheps, the one that's spelled like S C H O E P S. Um, Shops, Sheps, help me out, chat. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, that plugin's really great. And uh, it can help kind of stereoize some stuff without it getting all phasy and weird. So maybe check that out. Uh, great job, Jay. It's an awesome song and a really, really great mix, too. I think uh, you're ridiculously close. So hope that that helps. And I'm going to check out the chat and see who else we got in here. All right. Let's see. G Chad says uh, Spice Rack is dope. That's awesome. Um, uh, G Chad, if you're a Pure Mix Pro member, that should be included in your um, pr uh, your Pro membership. So go download that. Uh, okay, let's see what else we got here. Mike Ornsby, um, awesome Studio Jaman, and he Mike is here quite a bit. Thanks for being here again, Mike. Uh, Jaman means canoe, which is awesome. I learn more every time that you come. Okay, uh, let's see what else we got. I'm looking for people who have put their song in the chat. If you guys are here and you got a song up on Mixed Tank, drop the title of the song and your username. Okay, Deficiency. I love Deficiency. All right, let's see if we can find you. There you are. All systems go. All right, let's check it out. Thanks for being here. Awesome, man. Nice work. I'm going to listen to one more thing here. Stand by. Awesome. Cool. Great job on this. Very cool. Uh, dig the dig the sections, dig the time changes and all that. Uh, okay, so overall comments on it. Um, the strings, I want to just attack those really quick because you've got this orchestral uh, element that's in here and it's really important and adding a whole lot to the style and everything else. So um, they feel a little bit mid-rangey to me without support on um, other sides of the spectrum. So there's a lot of like you know, 500 to one and a half K kind of going on. They're very pointy and I feel like they could use some body, 
to kind of thicken them up a little bit and mesh them in with those guitars so that they all feel like they're in the same family and um, getting the same excitement and energy out of them. Um, the other thing was a couple of stereo placement choices. So, for example, I think it's around here. Let me just see. We're going to listen to a section. And basically, the point I want to make here is uh, where you decide to place something in the stereo field completely can change how much you elevate the next section. So you have a um, part, which I think is here. If it's not, it's that other little dip there in the valley. But um, where you place something, like when you have a break, for example, you have the single guitar playing, and right now you have it over on the left, and then when the next section comes in, the uh, rhythm guitars come in. I think they were a little bit more narrow than where that guitar was placed, but they're relatively same spot. And one thing you could do to kind of elevate that next section when everybody comes in is bring that guy in a little closer to the center and make the mix feel smaller on the breakdown. And then when the downbeat hits for the next chorus, you can have the thing go wide and just be huge. So let's just see if that's here. So just because he's so far off on the left, I'm not, over, you know, I'm not really feeling the lift when everybody comes back in. It just kind of feels like that's how wide the mix is. You've shown me where the fence is on that side of the wall. Um, so when everybody comes back in, it's just kind of there. Uh, so yeah, that's a creative, creative decision, but could be cool or worth checking out. Um, the single guitars in the center at one minute, so you have these like chunk, 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 and then ba -da 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 up the center. Those guys felt like they could be a little bit louder. And then I would consider doing a little bit of compression on them so that when some of the notes in that riff that are a little bit quieter from like say a pull off or something like that instead of a pick note, um, the it feels like the part is kind of going from close to me to kind of far away and it's quiet uh, just relative to those other pieces. So I like the idea of like the double guitars and then the center guy and then the double guitars. Um, but the center guy needs to be as important, I think, or at least close in importance to those chunks. Um, cool. And then over at 1.30, the uh, fast section that you have here, you have a symbol that's keeping time that's um, pretty quiet in the mix. Yes, yeah, whoever the symbol is on the left, he's the guy that's that's keeping time for the band, other than the kick and snare, which are almost doing the same subdivision. But um, he's keeping time for the snare, but he's really quiet compared to when those crashes hit. So if you can bring up that symbol, I think that's going to help push the section forward and keep time in it. And let's see what else. Uh, so right at the end here, also that section, let me listen for one more thing. So this, just um, a note, and I know that this is a bit of a stylistic choice, but I was feeling like I could use a little bit more um, bottom and heft from the uh, from the kick drum and the bass guitar, just something to like push that lower octave. Um, could be some EQ stuff, but also stylistically, I know kick drums normally aren't super full range uh, when they're moving that fast. I've talked a lot about how when you add low end, you can end up extending the note value of a kick drum so you have to be careful for that and then um with the bass guitar uh i'm not really hearing a defined bass guitar and i'm questioning if there even is one actually but i'm feeling like it could use just a little bit more bottom end on it but overall this is awesome i love the piece and um i think that yeah this is super cool you should keep going with it and see if uh I don't know, I could like see it being a part of a game or, or something like that and uh, getting a placement with it. So thank you for submitting. Um, and it was awesome. I'm going to put my note in here and then we'll go to the next song. So Mark was here. And then I'm going to copy that so I don't have to type it every time. All right, let's see who else is in the chat here. Going down from the top. Uh, Martin says, punchy kick. Okay. And yeah, the, um, the chat has a lot of good comments. So you should check those out as well. Okay. SR1B. He said he was ready for bullets before we got going. Um, you got a track from Laura Reed. So let's go check that out. And don't worry if I passed you, um, in the chat, 
uh, anybody else who submitted, if I didn't, you know, if you submitted it before him, don't worry about it. I'll go back through and we'll we'll try to get to everybody. Okay, this is some Supreli or Supralu. Uh, I'm gonna not pronounce that anymore, and we'll just keep going. All right, track status: final mix. He says, "I think I'm happy with this mix. Would appreciate some general feedback on feel, tone, and balance. If anything pops out too much or isn't pushed forward enough, thanks for listening and commenting. Here we go." Uh, so he says in the in the very first comment here, it says, I might add a, a precision. The acoustic guitarist somehow rubs something, her nails, her ring, don't really know exactly what, on the guitar strings, which messed the re recording up a bit. I tried to mitigate the rattle sound as much as I can, but I couldn't remove it. Um, yeah, so I would write her an email and say, thank you for the free percussion track. It's awesome. <laughs> Maybe you can uh, use that to your advantage because it's all in rhythm. It's, you know, her playing with it, so... Uh, it could be a unique tone. Here we go. Whose body feels the pressure? Somebody's rent is due. Somebody feels the weather. Always got a storm passing through Somebody got mouths to feed Somebody got far to travel Somebody lives in the streets Their whole world's unraveled The question got an answer Every lock has got a key Every day's another chance for us to write our history That's a lot of vocal runs at the end. That's crazy. Um, awesome. I was going to start talking in a vocal run, but I don't want that. And you don't want that. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I felt like the song did end uh, one vocal run earlier, um, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. I'm not producing the track. Um, so the overall, the song is amazing. 
Very, very cool. The uh, I hear what you're talking about with the percussion thing, and while I don't think it's the end of the world, um, if you had the opportunity to overdub it, if you could do that again, it might help you out, and then you could do something more intentional on percussion. Um, but it's not not terrible. Uh, somebody in the chat pointed out um, my next comment, which is just that the acoustic is actually very loud in the mix, too. So I'm wondering if you brought it down, if that would help take some of the attention away from the rattling sound. Um, it feels like the mix, uh, so this is my left, that's your right, so here's the left. I feel like the mix kind of feels like this, where like the left side of it feels more prevalent, louder than the right side, and it doesn't really feel like uh, there's a cohesive, easy stereo image across the whole thing. So maybe play with bringing that acoustic down and blending it more into the mix, especially as the song goes on. When everybody else is coming in, you could probably like sneak it back so that it's still doing all of the things it needs to do, you know, from a production standpoint, but you're kind of getting, you know, some of that extra rattle stuff is hiding in the track a little more. Um, overall, like I, this feels really awesome. And uh, I like all of the different things that are going on with the vocals and everything. Um, it felt a little bit dry uh, as Patrick Harbor at AOL.com, which kudos on still having an AOL address. That's awesome. Um, uh, pointed out he thought it was a little dry in some spots and a little above the mix. Um, possibly could use a little more volume automation, but if you feel good at that level, cool. I like the dry feeling of it, but it does feel just a hair dry. And I'm like thinking of other stuff in the style. Um, what are like some, you know, kind of aesthetic mix choices that we've heard before that you know are particular to the style that would that would make it feel in that vein and i think just like a touch of like a chamber or a plate or something not so loud that it sounds like reverb but just something to add a little cohesion to everything this is one of those tracks where you could use the same reverb on everybody just to give it a space and make it all feel like it was you know kind of played live at the same time which it may have been um on here too but yeah like something that would just kind of glue everybody cohesively um uh uad oceanway studios is amazing for this also ik media or ik multimedia has a few plugins like um the fame reverb and the sunset sound reverb that are great for just adding like a room to something so you could play around with something like a chamber or a plate or you could try to just go if you're going for the live dry feel which you are in this mix you could try just adding a little bit of a room to everybody and not so loud that like even necessarily that you hear it, but just that it makes everybody feel like they're all part of a part of a mix. Um, and it sounds really, really good, though. The vocal, I thought, was a little bit um, nasally in the mid range. Could maybe use a little bit more body. Let me just listen to a little more of that and see if I have anything to add. Somebody got far to travel. Somebody lives in the street. Yeah, I think um, just playing with the tone of the vocal might help it kind of recess in the mix a little bit too. And also the electric guitar that's going on is playing some really cool stuff. Um, it felt like it used a little bit more presence and a little more volume too, but that could also be relative to how loud the acoustic on the left is. Uh, yeah, overall though, this feels really, really great. Thank you so much for um, submitting and everything. And uh, I don't have any bullets uh, at all. It's, it's awesome. Thanks for being here, and that was super cool. All right, let's see who else is in the chat here. Hope it's helpful. And let's see. Uh, let's see. Jose is asking for Latin songs. Uh, Jose, if you have some in there, I'd love to hear some Latin songs. Martin has some good comments on that one, too. Um, yeah, awesome. Definitely check out the chat, because there's some really good... Uh, Really good comments in there. Okay. We got one from King Lom. 21 Cant Canto Pop Medley. Let's go check it out. Let's see if I can find it. Got it. All right. Here we go. Thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in live. Here we go. Freedom. Where's our freedom? Be. Can you tell me 
What's the reason? Reason that meant to be. Why, why do I my brain waiting to make that go down? We are suffocating, say you feel me. Why you deny that go down? I'm waiting, waiting to make that go down. Why you feel me? Okay, we're 35 seconds in and we have a lot of singers, uh, a lot of instruments going on, a lot has happened already. So I want to comment just as we go here. And then this is a nine minute epic. So we're going to do a little bit of like spot checking so we uh, can get to everybody that's that's here. But uh, first comment is a little bit of that low mid vo uh, vocal masking stuff happening in the beginning with the female voice. When she moves up the register, you hear it kind of clean up the whole mix because she's getting out of that range. So let's just listen to that a little bit. Freedom, freedom, what would it be? Can you tell me what's the reason? So listen to what's the reason there and the, the low mid, the bottom of that vocal. Can you tell me what's the reason? So yeah, just watch out for masking stuff with that. Um, that'd be a place to check it out. And sometimes you can solve masking issues by boosting, again, finding other points in the in the spectrum that make the vocals speak and then bringing those up as opposed to doing cuts all of the time. That's a good case for additive EQ versus subtractive EQ. But if it's still causing a problem, just do a little dip. <laughs> Now this vocal has the opposite thing going on to me where it feels very scooped. So I'm not hearing any mid-range in, in the male vocal that just came in. I'm hearing a lot of like there's top end and there's some low stuff going on, but I'm not hearing the mid-range that my ear would attract to on a vocal or latch onto as a vocal for intelligibility, right? So we're always going for like we want to understand what the singer's saying. Um, so I think a little bit more mid-range in this vocal would help out a lot. So I'd try by just bringing up some 1K and stuff in there. Or if you have another EQ going on, like a pull tech, where you're boosting a lot of low and a lot of high, then try dialing those guys back and getting a more even response across it. Here we go. <laughs> Another tab, another tag is to your girl. Another one, another one to speak up first. I find it hard to put someone before my word. And I'm too shy, so I'm struggling to find. <laughs> This track sounds exactly like all the voices in my head. I want to point out something really cool here. The decay on this reverb is timed really, really well. You filled the space perfectly and it, it like, you know, fades out by the time the next section comes in. It's really, really cool. So let's just check that out again. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, so some people are asking about the timing jumps in the chat. Um, this is, <laughs> don't go Kanye crazy on us, he says, uh, Kenneth. <laughs> um, so uh, the style of this, this is like a beatboxed, um, uh, kind of like pentatonics. They do that a lot where they'll just like shift tempos and go double time and time signatures and all that stuff. So that is what's going on uh, with this stuff, if you're not familiar with the style. Um, that's super cool. The uh, a general thing I'm I'm just kind of feeling is like there's a lot of masking going on with the vocals and this had to be so freaking hard to mix because it's like it's arranged so well uh, but there's so much going on and that's a lot of stuff to kind of keep keep track of so kudos to you for one because this would be a really difficult song to mix and I think that you're doing a great job on it um, so I'm gonna back up to just that reverb thing again. And then we'll just keep going forward. I'll comment on some of the other stuff I'm hearing, like in the kick and the bass and all that. Um, I've mixed a couple beatbox uh, records like this where you have like these um, bass sounds and stuff like that that are coming from loopers and they can be really difficult to, to work on. So yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Here we go. So, for example, here with the spoken part, um, I would look for intelligibility there and just try to bring back some of those low mids um, so that things don't get too muddy. This is a good spot to listen to for uh, the bass and kick sound interactions. Um, so things get a little bit muddy in there in that relationship. And uh, one other comment that I had was on the percussion, the, the drum style stuff. Um, it sounds like the attack time on the compressor is a little uh, slow, but then a lot of compression is happening. So the transients are really, really getting through, and then it's kind of clamping down, which is leading to some very harsh transients. I wouldn't tame them too much because you need the, um, again, this, the articulation, especially for everything that's happening here, uh, but maybe just check it out and see if they're a little too fast or not. Um, if it's not bugging you, leave it alone. Uh, just kind of notice that. So moving on, I'm going to play like another 10 seconds, and then I'm going to jump around a little bit since it's a nine-minute song. Um, want to move on. So here we go. Um, I want to point out a, a positive thing. You've done a great job of controlling sibilance on this, and there's so many consonants and everything. Great, great work. I'm just going to skip forward. Here we go. So a lot of that masking thing happening here, we're getting resonance in those low mids. Little popping there too, so you could do some high passing to clean up the bottom of a lot of these things. Yeah, high passes are your friends. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with the concept, just do a, a high pass curve on the bottom just to cut off the ultra low stuff. So we shouldn't be hearing a lot of rumbling when we just got the vocals going on here. I know there's some affecting going on and all of that, but you could definitely high pass, you know, 80, 100 hertz, you're 
not probably not going to miss it. And you're a little thick in the bottom anyway, so um, it could probably help you out. All right, here we go. Skipping forward. Beautiful, beautiful arrangement. It would take me the rest of my life to arrange a piece like this. Great job. That's so awesome. Um, yeah, I I think like a lot of this stuff is just kind of track wide. Watch out for transients. Watch out for low mid buildup. You could try also just muting the bass and the drums, um, the those beatboxed elements. Mute those and make all of your, your vocals um, sound really good to where there's no mud going on. And then you could bring in those other elements and just kind of do whatever you have to do to, to carve and make those work well. But try working with just the vocals a little bit and then work with just the kick and the bass or just the, the drums and the bass. Make those guys work really well and then see if you can um, get them all together. This is super, super close. It's just a couple little cleanup things. Um, and yeah... I was going to say you might even be able to do it in mastering, but I think it would need a little bit more um, work on the individual tracks a little bit. But yeah, sounds awesome and great job. The production, again, is insane. Very cool. Okay, let's uh, check out the chat for the next next mix. That thing was super cool. All right, Jose has a song here. Um, uh, yeah, the song is Dance Gypsy Girl. Awesome, King. Glad it, glad it helps. Thanks for being here. All right, and I see, uh, Pierre Paolo has one too. So let's hit, oh man, those people are back and they're trying to get me to go date people. I can't do it. I'm a married man, guys. Hide user from this channel. Remove. There we go. All right. And... Dance Gypsy Girl, let's do it. I uh, don't see it in the search. Uh oh. Now we're in developer console land. Hold on. Get out of there. What have I done? Let's just refresh. All right. So I don't see that one in there, Jose. Um, let me know if there's another way to search it and I'll come back to it. And let's see, what else we've got? Here we go, Just for the Night from Pierre. Let's bring that one in. Cool, here we go. All right, first off, totally dig the groove. I uh, just want to comment on this while we're here. The um, the vocal feels a little over compressed to me, and it's it's bringing up some some mud stuff. Um, I feel like masking is like the theme of the day today, but I'm hearing some masking stuff in there. Just where like that low mid frequency just kind of like it's resonating, and the way that um, I internalize that sound is when if you know the sound of feedback, which we all do, um, low feedback in particular, like it's just when a, a re particular resonance starts peaking out of the system, right? So it just, you know, gets louder than everything else. And then that goes back through the system again. And then we get a bigger resonance, bigger resonance each time. That's what masking sounds like to me. And it just kind of like keeps 
keeps creeping up and like it has a resonant peak to it and then it's just taking over and it becomes the focus of the sound so we'll listen from here and go but i think um, that's something to listen for in the vocal it's just over compression a little bit of masking here we go make me think she wants to take take me home for the night i'm a lover not a fighter if she makes it clear i'm her alibi So, one, I love this section. That's awesome. Um, everything feels a little over compressed, actually, to me. So, like, the bass guitar doesn't feel like it has a lot of dynamic. It feels like it's just kind of, like, squashed down and contained and then put there, um, which is, to a certain extent, the point of compression. But this feels a little extreme where I'm not hearing, like, some of the notes breathe a little bit more and have some life to them. They're just kind of, like, smashed into a little little guy there. Um so could be an overall thing, could be individual track thing, uh, but you probably don't need so much compression on a track like this. And that brings me to the point of you have a killer groove going, and when we're doing compression, we need to remember that we're dealing in time. So we're dealing with attack time, release time. Those change the envelope of the sound, it changes the length of the note, uh, how hard something hits, and we gotta be careful with those things because when we have a groove like this, and you're affecting the the timing of something with compression, if it's not doing it in a complementary way, you can suck the life out of something. Um, that's that's kind of what that phrase means, but I always think of it as like, the track doesn't breathe or something like that. But in this case, you can literally affect the timing of, of the performance that's going on. So I think um, a little less compression on all this, and this groove is going to like make you sway a little bit more and, and just kind of breathe and pump and hit a little harder. So moving on. <laughs> Might be cool to automate some effects on those those high notes too at the end of the phrases and stuff like that. So uh, you have a little space in between the next line. It might be cool if like the last line of that fed into a verb and just kind of took the space for a second. Um, completely a taste choice though. Similar comment uh, to a previous track here. Um, these da 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 vocals, we went down, filtered, and uh, we're trying to make the track smaller so that when that drum groove comes back in, as I'm sure it's going to, um, everything will kind of lift up again and we'll get a new section. So those outside vocals, I would consider bringing those in a little bit more mono so that we're just like shrinking the track overall. Here we go. <laughs> Take control, I climb inside you Instead it's the kind of thing on your mind Cause I don't need constant reminders If you tell me once, I'm there for the night Don't let it go, cause you know It feels right Yeah, so I think like, and this is another good case, that guitar could come up, but I'm also missing all the attack of the string, so I think it's just over compressed. Um, after that pause, I kind of want that guitar to be like right there and like smacking me like we're back, you know?
Feel like you're in love. Okay, these dot does uh da da does however you would say that. Um, they feel like they're spread a little too far and getting a little bit phasey. Uh, so let's check it out. Feel like you're in love. I can make it feel like you're in love. This is feel like you're in love. Do I remind you of something better? Something you treasure, something you know. Do I remind you of what it feels like when lovers feel like just for the night? Yeah, awesome. Very cool track, man. A um, lot of good stuff going on there. The vocals do feel a little bit dry uh, in the center. Stylistically, that's pretty cool. Maybe they could get a little bit more exciting on the choruses, like spread out, wide, affected. Um, but style choice. So uh, I think it's pretty neat. I hope that those comments are useful. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. At the end there with the bass guitar, the compression thing is really, really obvious. Um, at that moment so i think just uh loosen up the compression a bit and let it breathe let it be an organic thing that like punches and hits you and is dynamic and uh it's okay if um you know your level's not as hot as the other guy on spotify it's gonna feel way better so i hope that that helps let's see what we got on the next one let's see okay jose uploaded my song three days ago so let me know your username if you could and these robots are they're hitting on us again. Let's report them. There we go. All right. And let's see what else here. Let's remove these robots. <laughs> All right. Um, let's put the user in timeout. How about that? Need to get a mod in here. We need a mod. All right. Uh, yeah. Danielle says, everything is sounding so great. Yes, it is. It's definitely amazing. Um, Another Life from Strange. Let's check that out. Just want to see if there's some other ones on here. Tomboy with a little spice rack on the Moog. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's do Cage Cafe. Could have been so easy. And then we're going to come back to Another Life. So let's try this one. Here we go. Uh, let's see if any notes. So this is an advanced mix. Looking for overall thoughts on production, vibe, songwriting, and mix. Here we go.
Awesome, man. Thanks for submitting. That was cool. Um, yeah, so you asked for overall thoughts on production, the vibe, the songwriting, the mix, the whole package. Uh, I love the song. I think you guys are doing something really cool here. Um, I like how it felt really organic um, up to the point of like the bridge where the synth effect came in and then it started changing up a little bit. There's some interesting percussion stuff there. I feel like you're trying some things at the end um, just with different cadences in the vocal and all that. And it's uh, it's pretty neat. Um, I can almost like picture the writing session for this one. It sounds it sounds like it was a lot of fun. Um, so general comments that I think um, might open things up a little bit or, or um, make things kind of cohese a little bit more. Cohese? Congeal? What's the right word there? Um, so a couple things. Uh, one, I felt like things were very mono, right? So uh, we've got acoustic up the center. It sounds like there's a Rhodes or like a Wurlitzer kind of sound that feels fairly up the center. Maybe there's a little stereo stuff on it, but um, most of the guys are all in the center. And a lot of times I'll reserve the center for um, basically kick, snare, bass, vocal. Um, those are those are the guys that like primarily live in the center for me. And putting something like an acoustic there, it's uh, you have a harmonic instrument that's kind of going along with the chord structure, the harmonic structure of the song. Um, but it can take away from some of the punch and the clarity that are happening in the center. So I'll usually pan something like an acoustic off, even if it's just a little bit like, you know, five or six over numbers in Pro Tools, um, just a little over to the left or right, just to get it a little away from the vocal. So that it's not kind of clouding things up. Um, that would be something to just experiment with and see if you can make room for it there. The um, other thing was uh, the vocal... Sorry, one second. My throat. Okay, uh, the vocal pops out of the mix at times for me, um, and it feels like it needs a little bit of compression. So there was, at the beginning, I felt like the vocal was uh, too quiet, and it was underneath the drums, as um, Iben uh, here pointed out, L.A. Ban or uh, Iban. Um, he pointed out, like, drums are a bit hot in the mix. So I agree with that, um, but then... Uh, later on in the song, as the vocalist starts, you know, going into like a higher range, a little more energy, she's popping out of the mix to me. So we need to kind of control her a little bit. And if you, I do think it needs a little bit of like actual insert compression, but you could also try doing a parallel compression where you just squeeze the life, like do a copy of the vocal, then squeeze the life out of it, um, and then bring that up into the vocal. So you're still preserving the original transients, but then you're kind of adding in the, the dynamic control of the vocal as well. So parallel compression on vocals can help a lot for something like this. Um, the background vocal at 149 was really loud at first, and then it got soft. Uh, and at 234, when that bridge synth mallet thing came in, it felt like it was a little bit loud. And that could just be because it's the least organic thing up to that point. So everything was very organic, um, real instruments, until we kind of get to that guy. And then it just stuck out a little bit to me. So I don't think it's necessarily that it's the sound. I think it just needs to kind of come back in the mix a little bit. Um, although it's cool that it's a moment, too. So, um, yeah, play around with that, I guess. Uh, or leave it how it is if you like it. At the end, the vocals don't feel like they're mixed to me yet. Uh, it feels like those were kind of maybe added last minute um, sort of a thing, and they weren't quite uh, added in. So they're a little bit dry. They need some compression, um, and they don't feel like they match the tone of the previous vocal. Not necessarily like EQ tone, just like they don't live in the same space as the original vocal does. So a little bit more work on the outro there. Uh, from a production songwriting standpoint, the cadence of the vocal where she's kind of doing the fast rap thing and getting a lot of words in at once, sometimes it was hard for me to figure out what she was saying on the first listen through this and like just how, you know, would this song grab me, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think that it's cool that she's doing that, that stuff, but I would maybe look at the tempo of the song, um, not so that you slow it down so it doesn't feel like a cool rhythmic cadence to it, um, but just making sure that she stays intelligible. Might be something to play with, but... Uh, it didn't necessarily feel like it was way too fast or anything like that. Um, yeah, so I hope that that helps. I really enjoyed that. Uh, good luck with the rest of it, too. That's awesome. Thank you again for being here. Super cool. And let's see. Uh, there, yeah, there's some other good um, other good info in there. Daryl Adams says, where to find Spice Rack plugin? I got lost. All right, Daryl. Uh, so if you go to process.audio, you can 
go to process.audio and then plugins upper left click on spice rack uh decibel and sugar are in there too uh, amazing plugins decibel is constantly open on an ipad right next to me the whole time i'm sitting at this desk which is cool uh but yeah spice rack process.audio um you log into process.audio with your PureMix account, so you'll get the license that way. It'll it'll kind of walk you through once you're logged in uh, to get it. Let me know if that makes sense. Let's go on to another tune here. Let's see what else we got. Awesome. We got one from Studio Jaman. Mike, thank you for being here. I always get excited when I see your name on here. Uh, okay, so go over. Okay, Eagle, and I know there was another one that I said I was going to hit. Um, I will find it in a second. It's up in the chat a little bit. Stand by. Here we go.
Awesome. Yeah. Great job, Mike. Um, yeah, totally dig where this is going. I always love your tracks. Like they're so uh, so unique and actually very unique in the context of each other too. You're you're constantly doing new things, which is really cool. Um, so overall thoughts. First off, uh, it says in the track status this is an early mix and still in progress. Um, you say in the comments here that you're still working on it, especially uh, the transitions between the intro, the centerpiece, the back, the outro, all of that. Um, so uh, I'm going to kind of approach it from that way instead of like a, a final mix thing, like talking about the EQ balance of stuff and, and all of that, because I think that you're still working on that. Um, I do like Martin's comments that he put up here, uh, especially the count missing at 509. I would take a look at that. Um, yeah, the levels of the guitars, uh, I think you'll get to that and everything. Um, so I'm not going to comment so much on that stuff. There was there's something about the way that it is right now. Um, there's some people commenting about the distortion on it and stuff in the chat, and all of that is true. And I do think that it looks like this track is super loud as well. Um, you can kind of tell that because of the noise coming up at the end, uh, and then yeah, some other stuff too. So I would just make sure that the limiter isn't adding that distortion. Um, and if it's spice rack that you put on everything, awesome. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't sound like spice rack. It's a different type of distortion on this one. Um, so maybe just uh, back things off a little bit and see if um, see if you can get some of the clipping to go away. I, again, I think you're like, you're not quite at that point, and it could be that you're working you know at loud levels on the production, um, and you just have all your faders cranked up and gain stage is a little funky right now. Don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you're kind of aware of the distortion at this point and you can you can kind of hear it and all that back things off see if you can get rid of that that's all i'm going to say about it um as far as the drums going on the right i think if you committed to that it could be kind of interesting in in a beatles kind of way right like um in like a 60s 70s uh you know very this has a like very analog feel to me it, it like feels like that era the the drum tones and everything feel like that and I thought it was kind of interesting that it was going that way, but you have the kick in the center still. And I would say if you're going to do it, I would commit to it and, and put them over there. And I think that that would be a neat aesthetic. Um, if that's not working, I would just bring the snare back into the center of the mix um, and just decide if, if they're going to be centered or if it's going to kind of be offset. But I would keep that kick in the snare together to make it feel like it's more intentional than just... Um, Something that, you know, it, it kind of sounds like pan knobs are just a little messed up right now, but there's a little bit of intention with it. So it could be really cool. Go full Beatles, you know? <laughs> um, that would be really fun. Fab pointed out a song in his newsletter, um, I think it was two weeks ago. Uh, it was around that period, and it, it wasn't like a Beatles thing or this style. It was, I want to say it was an R&B thing, but it was definitely like they had just gotten stereo and they hadn't, you know decided kick and snare in the middle yet and things were just spread out like crazy and when you didn't have the right speaker on it sounded like there were no drums in the song like beatles records like some of the beatles records so it could be neat if you if you decide to go with that um other than that the uh i think like one thing i wanted to just kind of comment on was um the eagle sounds at the beginning are pretty shrieky they're a little painful so watch out for that when you get to mix uh and also let the song be the apex of the entire thing. So right now the Eagle in the beginning feels like it's louder than everything else. Uh, and kind of at the end as well, I would make those moments a lot quieter. You know, you don't necessarily want to um, be so quiet that at the end, everything feels like it dropped off and you have to turn your headphones up to, to hear what's going on at the end of the song. But at the beginning, for sure, I would leave some dynamic range to go that when the song pumps in, it like it feels like we're we're going at that point. Uh, but yeah, uh, Mike, I love your stuff. Thank you so much for submitting and um, good luck with it. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, let me put my little stamp here and then we're going to get to some other tunes. I see all you guys that are putting your songs in there. I'm going to get to as many as possible as I can before 4.30. So here we go. Our next one, Jose has been trying to tell me how to get to the song. I got his username now. Let's see if we get it. It is uh, Dance Gypsy. Here it is. I got it. Awesome. We found it. Let's check it out. Here we go from the top.
Awesome. I'm just going to comment on some stuff I've heard up to now. Um, I agree with uh, Tom Fullery on this, as I usually do. Um, the uh, compression on the drums is a little bit much that feels like it's choking some of the life out of them. Um, but I want to comment on this is awesome. This is live. Uh, and I think the strings sound really great, too, on this. I don't know if those are live strings or not, but they sound really cool. Um, so the, the main thing that's sticking out to me right now is the mid range presence of the lead guitar that's in the center here. It is a more present sound than everything else that's going on in the mix. So there's more brightness to it. There's more clarity. Um, it feels like it's more, you know, direct and everybody else feels a little dull. So, uh, I would either probably liven up everything else, but um, the other option is that you bring the guitar more back to the other guys, since he's only one and the other guys are many. Um, and then you try just kind of doing some broad tone shaping on the whole thing. Uh, Sonic Science Lab put some stuff in there about things feeling boxy or nasally. Um, I think that like this record would have a tone to it in the darker sense, uh, too. Another way to approach it would be try muting that that lead guitar and then making everything a little bit more exciting and doing some things like cutting out some of the boxy stuff, um, like low mid stuff. Uh, watch out in like the 200, 300 range. Um, the kick drum is a little bit uh, poofy. If that's that's not a great great explanation. So like 60 to 100, it gets a little bit woofy in there. So I would just try doing a little light cleanup, um, releasing some of the compression on things and just seeing if you can get some more life out of it. And then bringing that guitar back in, who's got the more bright and mid-range presence thing and seeing where you're at with it. And then just trying to get them all to play in the same world. Uh, because the song is seven minutes long and I want to get to a few more, um, I'm going to move forward to the end here. Let's check it out. Uh, the bass does feel a little fat at times too. Like it's got too much low, low, um, low end going on, too much sub. So maybe a little bit of cleanup there. Uh, you might try a little bit of a high pass on the ultra sub stuff, and then just try to control that range a little bit. Sometimes like a multi band can be really good for that. Um, other times not at all. So play with it and see if it works. Yeah, watch out for things like the um, timbales, I think, uh, poking out of the mix a little bit. Just do a little bit of automation on those. Yes, yeah, so maybe more uh, synth keys. A lot of sub at the end there on that fade out as well. Let's listen. And then I would see if there's anything that you can do to make it feel more like a live mix there. So I don't know if you have any applause from somewhere else in the set that you could put in there. Um, and as well as like trying to add a common space. So as I talked about a little bit earlier, like Ocean Way um, Studios from uh, UAD is amazing for this. Uh, T-Rex or um, IK Multimedia's Fame and Sunset Sound plugins are also really good at this. Uh, just give everybody a common space and make it feel a little bit more live. Uh, I hope that that helps. So say thank you for, for tuning in and uh, thanks for your patience while I found your song. Very cool. Okay. I'm getting more bots in here. Hide user on this channel. There we go. Let's see. There we go. I think I got it that time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Primetime is really pimping Spice Rack over here. Uh, he's saying that it's very economical on your CPU. There you go. All right. Um, Nicely checked for live performance. Yeah, it was very nicely checked. Uh, lots of really good, um, yeah, lots of good comments in here from the chat on this. Great job. Okay, uh, next up, I have my list here. So I'm going to do Silas Play Pretend. Here we go. All right, let's dive in. I'm sinking 
To the bottom as I'm drinking Down the bottle I can feel it On my lips every sip Goes to my head as I'm hanging Okay, I'm going to check initial vocal level compared to the rest of the mix. Um, excited to hear this track already, so uh, I'll move through this quickly. Here we go. I'm sinking. Okay, so that's what caught me was um, the initial level of everybody before the vocal is very quiet, and then the vocal comes in very loud. So I would consider raising those guys up before the lead vocal comes in. We'll see if the vocal's just loud throughout the track, but that's where I'm at right now. Here we go. I'm sinking to the bottom as I'm drinking. Down the bottle I can feel it on my lips every sip. Goes through my head as I'm hanging by a thread. I'm just trying to forget everything that you said. No, I regret. Okay, a couple comments up to this point. Um, the bass, I see that you got a comment from Laban One on here about the bass. Um, put your finger on the fader to figure out the volume, the amount of it. I don't know, 1 dB, 2 dB, doesn't matter. Let's do it until it feels good. Um, some other stuff I noticed. Uh, the vocal might be a touch over compressed. The, uh, there's a lot of lip smacking stuff happening here. So again, I'm just going to say isotope, mouth declick. It solves all your problems. It's amazing. Um, if you guys are hip to sound flow, I actually built a macro that like creates a duplicate playlist and then processes the vocal and then yeah, it just cleans it up and it's amazing. Like I almost do that. Um, yeah, not every vocal because you only do it when you actually have a problem. But uh, I do it a lot because a lot of vocals have problems and like it just kind of clears all that stuff up without destroying the track. So I would check that out. It'll take care of your lip smacky stuff. On the bass, you have some side chaining going on, but it feels a little bit loose on the groove. So if we're, you know, ducking the bass and then bringing it back up in like a quarter note or something like that, make sure it rises back up to the initial level by the time that the um, the next hit comes so that we actually feel the vroom, 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 vroom. Bad explanation with my mouth, but um, just check out the timing for that in the groove. And if you have a side chain compressor that's like doing the note value and you're like, no, that's on it, Watch out for compression after because again compression changes timing and it's possible that the compressor is letting go at a different time than what the side chain compressor might be doing. So if you have a compressor leading the side chain or yeah, after the side chain compressor, it could be changing your stuff. Or sometimes if you're doing too much on the stereo bus, you can also mess it up with that. So moving on from there, here we go. Goes to my head as I'm hanging by a thread. I'm just trying to Forget everything that you said. No, I regret it when I'm laying in bed and you left me on red. But for now, I'll play pretend. There's some stuff going on with the roads and the whirly there that a uh, little bit of widening happening that's um, causing some phasiness there. So watch out for that. I love the sound of the um, the hats and everything that are that are on the um, happening on the chorus there. They feel a little bit loud to me, uh, but 
kind of preference and it's kind of cool i do get a sense of height from them so good job on that it's hard to it's really hard to get height out of a mix and this feels good It sounds like there's some high mid stuff going on in the vocal through here, uh, just consonant things, so. Feels like a bit of compression there too on the synth. Let's uh, move forward. That right, I think, could be bigger. Um, maybe make that at the same level as the vocal that comes back in. So it's like we came out of this quiet section and then you say right loud to kind of like wake up. And then here we go. There is a whistling resonance that's going on in the entire track too, around like two and a half K somewhere in there, like one and a half to two and a half, something in there is a persistent resonance that um, almost sounds like your ears ringing a little bit. And I'm not sure what instrument it's in, but it's it's been in all of the choruses there. So watch out for that. <laughs> Yeah, so just watch out on levels from the soft parts to the loud parts, the vocal level at the entrance, um, uh, the widening on the the roads um, or the whirly there. I think that's a whirly actually. Uh, and then that resonance thing I was hearing, uh, the bass feels a little loud or big. Um, watch out for the timing on the side chaining. I think that's that's all I had on that one. Great job, Silas. That song is killer. Uh, I hope that that does really well for you because it's super catchy and it's awesome. Um, check out the YouTube comments for, for stuff too. A lot of people doing some good comments on there. Okay. Yeah, good comments in there. All right, uh, let's see here. My next one is going to be from Gord. And then we got one more after that. Here we go. Remnants from my past. Here we go. I like old movies. Love the way they end. Happily ever after. Yeah, that's a real nice trend. Our gold guitar with brand new strings. Nothing beats the sound of when a guitar sings. Right, 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 right. And you're all alone Remnants from your past is all you own Got me an old house Makes me reminisce Think about my family my heritage Still laugh at old jokes Even when they're bad Makes me think 
about old friends Then it makes me sad Cry, 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 cry In a circle of friends now Cry, 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 cry Thunder, a room with no view when I'm six feet under. I like old women. Yeah, I love the things they say. Makes me think about living in some crazy way. Cry, cry, cry in a circle of friends now. Cry, 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 cry in a circle of friends now. You look into the future and you're all alone. Remnants from your past is all you own. Gord, I love it. That is awesome. Very cool. The uh, uh, very small things here. So first off, I love the guitar that's happening on the left. I love the tone of it. I love the wah thing that's happening. That's amazing. Great job. Um, the only thing I'm uh, kind of hearing is in the vocals. Um, and one other thing was that the kick drum feels a little bit big, uh, maybe a little long or too much low end, but it's not a big deal. And if you didn't touch it, it'd be fine, I think. Um, so the vocals, they feel a little bit mid-range focused. Um, and as Sonic said, I think like there's some boxiness in the vocal. So what does that mean when people say there's boxiness in the vocal? It's that there's just like a lot of like the 500 to 1K thing. It's very mid-range focused, kind of nasally, um, telephony sound. And you can fix that by just finding some body in it from, from below that if you have space for it in the track. If not, watching out for the top end of it, see if you can get some more excitement out of it, or just watch out for um, resonances that might be happening, like 800, 400, those octave points. Um, sometimes they can kind of bunch up and, and create some peaks in there. So just play with um, play with an EQ, you know, one that you can kind of drag the band around, and you can you can boost it up and just kind of go around until you find something that just sounds like feedback, like overloading and freaking out, and then kind of tuck it in and uh, you don't want to remove all of it because it's not all bad, but um, just try to get it more in balance with the rest of the spectrum. Not from a nerdy, how does it look on the graph way, but how does it sound to your ear? So I do think you could use a little bit more body in the vocal. And I think if you get the vocals right on this, you're in a really, really great spot. Um, I wanted to point out uh, the sibilance comment that Sonic made. And I've seen this on your other tracks too, about the DSer thing. I'm not sure if I said it the last time as well. Sorry, hold on one second. A little something in my throat today. Um, so you said, no DSing on the voice. Not sure why I'm always having this problem. So uh, because of the nature of the song, I'll, I'll comment on this. Um, and I'm kind of going off of, uh, yeah, your picture and stuff too. But I had a job um, for a couple years in a post-production house doing recording voiceover work. And we would get all kinds of different voiceover talent in. And one thing I always noticed on some of the older guys was that their S's were never pronounced. And it always sounded like I had over ds them. So this is just a thing that, that happens um, as as you get older and like things change and all that stuff. And it sounds like I'm 
talking about becoming a teenager here, but like uh, as it goes on, like uh, sometimes like the S sounds and and that articulation and the voice can kind of can kind of go down. And the ways that I would get around that would almost be like a reverse deesser, right? So I would use an expander in that range. Um, I know like you know uh, Fab Filter Pro MB, um, you can go the other direction instead of like compressing a certain range, you can expand it. And sometimes I would do that just to add a little bit more clarity in the vocal that way, or I would just kind of boost in the essing ranges a little bit more than normal. Um, and it's not something that I hear happening on you all the time. Just once in a while, the S's get a little bit buried. Uh, you can also just take care of this by like cutting up the clip around the S and then just boosting the S up. Or I know in uh, Melodyne, they have an S feature and you can actually make the S's louder. It'll select all the S's and then you can boost them up. Um, but I wouldn't do it globally. I would go through and just on ones that might be getting, um, not becoming through as clear as the other ones, just boost those up a hair and just, just kind of level it out and it'll be completely fine. And it's something that like I've run into a whole bunch in the past. So, um, yeah. So anytime that somebody says you're DSing too much on the vocal, um, I think it's just a matter of like, Oh, I could probably just add some more clarity on the S's and it's fine. Uh, I think the songwriting on this is great. I love your voice as well. Um, you said your, your singers abandon you. So you're working to write and record songs where you can use your own voice. I think your voice is awesome and you should keep doing it. This is a really, really cool song. Great lyrics, great story, dug the whole thing. I also liked um, uh, Ibon's comment about a hi-hat tambourine or something dividing the beat would make the kick and snare pattern seem less repetitive. I agree with that. I think like just doing some kind of fun percussion thing. And have a good time with it too. Like, um, you know, mic up a hat and a tambourine and just play it yourself or uh, instead of like MIDI programming it in or something or find some other fun instrument around like, you could do fun stuff with on this, like even a vibra slap or something like that. But have a good time with it. Add some percussion, um, and more importantly, yeah, I think if you just touch those vocals up, not even about the S thing, just the the tonal shape of them. I think this is in a really really great spot. And thank you for submitting. Always awesome to see your stuff on here. I hope it helps. Uh, I believe that you're in the chat, but I'll throw my little comment on there anyway. So bam, there you go. All right. Here's our last one for today. This is from Estevan. This is Heaven or Hell. And here we go. Gonna pause here. There is a um, S that jumps out to me, so I just want to make a, mo a moment out of it. So yeah, the one that happens right there. Just watch out for that right out of way. It like jumped out of the speakers and grabbed me. So moving on.
Awesome, man. Um, I think overall, uh, I'm feeling a lot of compression, which it looks like those are the other comments that have uh, kind of been put down as well. So um, Tom said build up around 130 or so. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, like 160. So yeah, same range, like that low mid uh, kind of area between 100 and 200. Um, and then, yeah, the compression um, overall just feels like a little bit much. And then you mentioned some stuff about MSEQ on the synth and just doing some things on the sides. I'm hearing a little bit of phasiness happens, which I usually hear with that kind of processing. Um, so just, you know, watch out for over widening or like really separating the mid from the sides and all that stuff. Um, those tools are amazing and they're very useful uh, when they're done um, tastefully and, uh, you know, all of that. But if you go too far with it, you can start causing some really weird phase issue kind of things. Um, it's not overly overly phasey on on this one so if you dig it i think it's cool but just watch out for it it's maybe on the hair a hair on that way um the other thing i just want to say is um don't overthink things too much just like from reading your description and your responses and all of that um just make it uh like have fun with this stuff and don't overthink like you know, maybe I should do mid side on this thing. Like you'll, you'll instinctually know if those are the things that you should do. But, um, yeah, I guess the overall like thing is to just have fun with it and make sure that it's feeling really good to you. Uh, in addition to using all of the techniques that you might learn on pure mix or, or anywhere else, um, focus on the groove and the feel of it. And then all of those other, you know, all of the techniques and everything, those are tools to help you reach your vision. Um, just wanted to say that because of just kind of the way that you're writing in here and um, the amount of attention to detail to some of the some of the techie stuff on it, um, which I think is great and awesome and keep going like with with learning it all and everything. Um, just make sure that it's still feeling good and you're still having fun and not overthinking it. Uh, and that's I tell myself that all the time. So, um, yeah, I think that you're doing a great job. It does feel a little bit uh, just over compressed. So. See if you can get some more dynamic about of it. Um, loosen things up a little bit. It's okay if it's a little bit quieter, especially if you're going off to a mastering engineer. Um, let them worry about the loudness stuff, and you just make sure that it feels great and dynamics feel great. Uh, I think that the song is awesome. And other than that, I would say just like watch out for what you have in the center that is holy ground, and just reserve it for the important things like the vocal and all of that. Um, there was some harshness in the vocals that I know you talked about with Tom in the comments, uh, about like boosting some high end after you DS to try and bring some life back to it. If you're having to do that, um, I've like to absolutely do that from time to time too. But the first thing to look at is, am I DSing in the wrong place or too much? So just play around with the DSer and see if you can get it to feel balanced without losing life from it. Um, and if the regular DSer isn't working, sometimes uh, dynamic EQ works. I love the Fab Filter stuff. Pro Q3 can sometimes do better than their DSer, just depending on what the vocal is and all that. I've I've had luck that way. And then um, Soothe is a great plugin as well. Uh, however, um, Soothe tends to act in that permanent solution to a temporary problem kind of way and as long as it's not you know destroying your track it's it's all good but um soothe is not just a band-aid that you you know slap across everything without you know having some intention about it so i'm always a little bit wary of recommending that one although it's an amazing 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 plugin uh hopefully that makes sense why i would be like a little apprehensive about it but yeah i think i think this is really cool i love the song and i think you're you're super close um try loosening up the compression and see how it feels and then just just have fun like turn it up and see if it feels good. Um, yeah, I hope that that helps. And I'll put my comment here just in case you're not in the chat. I'll see if you are in a second. And yeah, I think that that does it for today. So yeah, last reminder. Um, first of all, this is all the youtube -y stuff I have to do now. So uh, like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Uh, it helps us keep going. And it really does actually help us keep going. We mean that when we say it. Um, it uh, knowing that you guys dig the content and everything will will keep us here every every other week. Um, we will have a plug-in show launching on the off Mondays, no later than very soon. And uh, Spice Rack is now available in everybody's pro member account. Just head over to process.audio, log in with your PureMix account, and you can download Spice Rack and, and get to play in with it. If you're not a PureMix pro member, 30-day trial on it. Head over to process.audio. Try for free. 
and play around. I think it's really, really special, and I uh, I know a lot of you guys are going to really dig it. It's um, I had the pleasure of designing a lot of presets for it, and I had a blast doing it. Uh, actually, a little little behind the scenes about that, my directive was to make 50 presets for it, and at first you're thinking, how am I going to make 50 sounds out of a distortion plugin? And then you start digging into Spice Rack, and you realize that it's very, very easy to make 50 different sounds. Um, so yeah, dig in there, have fun with it. It's a great plugin. And uh, we know that you guys will dig it. So uh, until next time, thank you guys so much for, for coming and hanging out. And thank you so much for submitting mixes. Thanks for being in the chat. And we'll see you in two weeks from today. Bye.